I wish to call upon Michelle Koninsi, the Assistant Secretary General and Executive Director of the Counterterrorism Committee, Executive Directorate uh, holds a distinguished career with the European Union, including as President of Eurojust, the European Union Agency addressing judicial uh, cooperation in criminal matters. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. President, uh, Ministers, uh, Excellencies and distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks so much uh, for this uh, opportunity to engage with all of you, uh, stakeholders, key stakeholders on current challenges uh, to UN peacekeeping and the role of United Nations police. CTAT, the Counterterrorism Executive Directorate, uh, which I'm now heading, uh, is mandated to assist the Security Council uh, Counterterrorism Committee to monitor, promote, and facilitate uh, member states' implementation of all relevant Security Council resolutions. Uh, and God knows that only the last years uh, we were confronted uh, with 10 new Security Council resolutions only focusing on the fight against terrorism and the prevention of terrorism. Well, we see that all proceeding to evaluations of the CT measures in all the 193 member states, uh, do it according to the same methodology in an objective and neutral way, and take into account all the latest developments uh, in the counterterrorism context. Terrorism and the link between transnational organized crime uh, have become a significant feature of the landscape in which United Nations peacekeeping operations and United Nations police must deliver their mandate. The nature of that environment, operational environment, continues to evolve and the nature of conflict in general continues to become more fragmented and asymmetric, as USG Lacroix has referred to. However, some constants remain. Terrorist acts or crimes with a terrorist intent committed without discrimination and against the population. For the captain of this UN cruise ship, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Terrorism and the fight against terrorism is one of the top priorities. Impunity in terrorism is simply not an option. And as the Security Council has continuously reaffirmed strong rule of law and human rights compliant criminal justice institutions are an essential pillar of a comprehensive counterterrorism response. United Nations police are critical partners in our collective efforts to support member states to counter terrorism, to contain its impact, and to build resilient and healthy societies. As I said, we are guided in our efforts by the relevant Security Council resolutions, and the counterterrorism requirements of the relevant resolutions apply both in times of conflict and in times of peace. In accordance with these resolutions, member states, all 193 member states, are required to develop comprehensive counterterrorism approaches that link security to justice and link economy and economic development to social cohesion, implement approaches that include prosecution, rehabilitation, and reintegration, and engage with communities, religious leaders, and civil society within the framework of whole of society approach. And law enforcement forces uh, and United Police have a unique and critical role to play in all those efforts by maintaining peace and security and establishing and upholding the rule of law, facilitating investigations and prosecutions that bring terrorists to justice and also give a voice to the victims of terrorism 
engaging with communities to build trust and confidence and match service delivery to personal and local needs and concern. CTAC is proud to stand with the Department of Peacekeeping Operations and with the United Nations Police in all these efforts. Allow me to share just a few brief examples of how we complement each other. Indeed, this story is a story of building bridges for peace, building bridges for security, partnership and complementarity. And not so long ago, ago USG Zwerf, uh, uh, head of uh, DPKO um, RLC and myself, revamped uh, a strategic partnership framework agreement, allowing us, CTAT, to share strategic and key information from its counterterrorism assessments and analyses, both with, in this case, DPKO and with relevant special representatives of the Secretary General, with a view to enhancing operational design and programming. Pursuant to Security Council Resolution 2395, CTET assesses and analyzes, analyzes the principal gaps and capacity building needs of member states. Policing and law enforcement institutions working as appropriate in close partnership with the PKO and with the Special Representative's Office. A last example of an assessment we proceeded in one of the Western African countries was that in the CETA dedication, we had a high-level expert of the PKO RLC in DDR. I can assure you that this high expertise uh, was leading us to much more focused uh, and targeted assessments. Within the Counterterrorism Implementation Task Force Working Group on Legal and Criminal Justice, CTAT works to develop guidance on the role of the military in enabling criminal justice. No need to say that how we collect, retrieve, preserve, share, and use this battlefield evidence in tangible courts uh, in criminal justice is extremely important uh, that we have the right guidance, correct guidance in accordance with the rule of law and human rights is essential. We are working on this. The police are, of course, a vital part of those discussions. The nexus between transnational organized crime and terrorism has been highlighted uh, in previous uh, statements. Uh, we are currently trying to identify the good practices and lessons learned and launched a project uh, that uh, uh, includes consideration of the financial flows linked to trafficking in persons which are used to finance terrorism. The outcome of those analyses will see the daylight later on in October here at the United Nations. Together with the Biometric Institute, CTAT has developed a compendium of good practices and references of a range of specialized uh, topics, uh, drawing on the contributions of the United uh, Nations Police, again, among uh, others. We know that with the flow of terrorists, uh, the movement of foreign terrorist fighters, uh, we have uh, to secure our borders. We have to ensure very strong law enforcement. Uh, we hence need to apply new techniques, biometrics, APNR, API, PNR, uh, or among those new um, uh, techniques. Uh, this requires capacity, a good respect uh, of human rights, uh, privacy, uh, a lot of uh, technical knowledge, uh, structural, and a lot of uh, budgetary concerns and issues. Uh, well, we are now building up uh, uh, a compendium in close cooperation with uh, Interpol and with the Biometric uh, Institutes that will be launched next week uh, to offer an insight in good practices uh, and lessons uh, learned, how to have a respectful use of biometrics. And more generally, we will and uh, we are um, uh, identifying certain challenges and needs for specific member states and we can do this by working with the United Nations Police to uh, identify solutions. In all its missions, United uh, Police continue to demonstrate the vital role played by policing in the broader criminal justice chain. Supported by the right mandate and armed with the right capacity, United Nations Police could also deliver tailored capacity building assistance on the basis of the needs identified by CTAT in its dialogue with member states on behalf of the committee. I continue to be greatly impressed by the commitment of and the determination of the PKO um, and to work as one UN with other uh, entities of the United Nations and with the special representatives offices 
as an example, in addressing issues of common concern within their respective mandates. Uh, if we want to navigate, we have to navigate the way forward. Uh, so let's partner up, let's join the forces, uh, let's work uh, together, let's be engaged, uh, let's strive for partnerships and cooperation. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you very much for your <clears throat> insightful presentation.